once on the home page, you'll see you have a menu ring with several options on it. Go to the utilities option, and the very first thing you want to do is you want to register your TriCaster. The TriCaster needs to be registered from the very first day you use it. It will function, but it will produce a watermark on any of the outputs. To remove that watermark, you want to make sure that you register the TriCaster. Now, this can either be done online by connecting the TriCaster to an internet connection. It can also be done by calling New Tech Customer Service, and they'll walk you through the registration process. If there are updates available for the TriCaster, you can find them by using this option under the Utilities menu item. Update TriCaster will go out and look for any updates that are available and allow you to install them. You also have the ability to defragment your hard drives and restore to factory defaults. You only want to restore the TriCaster to its factory defaults if you've been told to do this either by your reseller or by NewTek. Restoring the TriCaster to its factory defaults restores it to the base level of software that was on it when it came out of the factory. This removes any updates that have been applied. So if you do find yourself in a situation where you need to restore the TriCaster back to factory defaults, just remember you're going to have to reapply any updates that have been applied since the first time you fired up and registered the machine. Next we'll go to the help menu item. And here's where you have access to all of the user guides that are available for all of the things that come with the TriCaster and some accessories that are available as well. The live production environment user guide is available here. This is a PDF which is searchable and printable. There's also some additional software that comes with your TriCaster. There's a full nonlinear editor called Speed Edit, and the user guide is available under Edit. And there's a full character generator called Live Text as well. Now, there are also user guides for all of the external control surfaces that are available for the TriCaster. You have access to the license agreement and the about box for the TriCaster, and user guides for some of the add-on software that's both available for the TriCaster and that comes with the TriCaster as well. Next, we'll look at the add-ons menu item, and this is where you have access to any of the add-on software that's available for the TriCaster. All TriCasters come with a demonstration version of the Virtual Set Editor. This will allow you to create virtual sets from scratch or modify pre-made virtual sets for use in the TriCaster. You can add logos, change out the backgrounds, and really customize your virtual environments to meet your needs. Now, you can do all of this with the demonstration version, but it will produce a watermark on any of the sets that are created. If you like what you see with the demonstration version and you want to buy the full version, please contact your reseller. Once you buy the full version and install it, the watermarks will be removed and you can start using the virtual set editor. And again, the user guide for this product is available right here. Now let's take a look at setting up a new session. Let's go to the new item on our menu ring and this is where you can create a new session in the TriCaster. A session will remember every attribute that you set up within the live production. And this allows you to set up different shows as sessions and then access them so that when you bring up that show, all your graphics are loaded, your titles, all of your inputs are set up, your virtual sets, every attribute of the session gets remembered. So you could have a session for a morning show, an afternoon show, and an evening show, or even for specific people, especially in an educational environment. Each student could have their own session and load up their own show, and all of the content they need for their production is there and ready to go. So when we're starting a new session, the first thing we do is we give the session a name. Now, if you don't give the session a name, it will default to that day's date. And if you have multiple sessions during one day that you don't give a name to, then it will be that date and it will become sequentially numbered. So, so it's easy to recognize your sessions. I recommend that you give each one a unique name. Simply click in the session name area and go ahead and type in a name. We're going to call this TriCaster Demo. You also have the ability to choose which drive you want to store the session information on. Now, if you're using a default TriCaster with no drive in the removable bay, the only option is going to be the D drive. That's the internal drive. If you install a drive into the removable drive bay, this will become the E drive. And then you can choose whether you want to store the session information either on the internal drive or on the external drive that you can remove and put up on the shelf. If you're using a multi-standard TriCaster, you can select what video standard you want to work with, NTSC, NTSC-J, or PAL. If you're using a standard TriCaster, NTSC will be the only option available. You then get to pick the session resolution, and you can pick uh, 1080i or 1080p at multiple frame rates, 
720p, also at multiple frame rates, or standard definition at 4x3 or 16x9. The session resolution is going to be the resolution that is output from the primary program video out on the back of the TriCaster. There's also an auxiliary video output which is configurable, which could be the same resolution if you wanted it to be, or you can configure it to be different resolutions or different types of outputs. We'll look at that once we get into the live production interface. Now that we have all of these variables selected, we're ready to go ahead and start our session. When you start the session, it will bring you to the sessions page. I'm going to go ahead and back out of here. We're not ready to go all the way into our live production yet, but I wanted to show you how to actually start the new session. To get back to the home page, you can click on the big arrow here in the upper left hand corner. Now you also have the ability to open a session that's already been saved and you can see there's a variety of sessions over here that you can open. So again, every time you set up a session, it's going to get saved and then you can launch any pre-made session at any time from the TriCaster. You can even back a session up and then restore a session that's been backed up to a hard drive to get a session from one TriCaster to another or to store it and then bring it back for use in your TriCaster. Next you have the shutdown menu option and this allows you to restart your TriCaster, to shut the TriCaster all the way down and have it power off or to exit to Windows. And if you do try to exit to Windows you'll get a warning and you'll have to do an extra mouse click to get all the way out to Windows. The TriCaster should be viewed as an appliance, not as a computer. That's why we discourage you from going into Windows. Now there are a few situations where you might need to go into Windows if you want to set up a domain for your network, if you want to be able to customize some streaming profiles and things along those lines. But again, there's just very few things you need to get to Windows for and we don't want any extra software installed on a TriCaster. Again, it's an appliance and if you install other software and use it for other purposes, that may impact the performance of the TriCaster. So keep the system completely clean and don't install any other software other than software that NewTek or your reseller tells you to install. Now let's go to the open menu item on our menu ring here and let's go ahead and open up a session. Now this will bring you to the sessions page and the sessions page allows you to do a few things. First of all, let's go to manage media. From the sessions page, you can import all the media that you want to use during a live production. Any media that you're going to use, whether it's video clips, stills, titles, audio clips, all need to be imported before the live session. This is done using the import media button and this will launch the import media requester and again, this allows you to go out and search your computer. So if you have an external USB drive hooked up with your content, you can get to that. And I'm just going to navigate here to where my content is. And in this folder, I have four different file formats. I have an AVI, I have an Apple ProRes image, I have an H.264 high def clip, and I have a uh, MPEG-2 clip. Now, you can use all of these different file formats. I'm just going to select them all and open them. And as you look, you can see that some of them have been set up just to import. So my transcode button is ghosted and it's turned off. It knows it can play this file format right out of the box. The Apple ProRes file is not supported natively, so it's automatically set to transcode. Now the H.264 and the MPEG will play natively, but it leaves it open as an option. So if you should run into a file that's not playing back properly in the live production environment, you would be able to come back, re-import it and transcode it, and then you would be assured that it's going to play back. So again, all your video clips, all your stills, external stills, titles, and audio should all be imported into your TriCaster session using this process. Once you've got all of the media lined up ready for import, simply hit the import button. Once all your files have been imported, you'll get a message telling you so, and you're ready to continue. Within the sessions page, you also have a menu ring that has some other options, and you have the option of going to the nonlinear editor here, so this will take you to speed edit. You have the option of opening the included character generator live text and you also have the option of going into your live production environment. Let's go ahead and start the live production environment. 
As the TriCaster fires up your session, it needs to configure itself. So you'll see it going through the process of configuring the inputs and you'll see some things changing and there's messages that can appear during this process. And once the TriCaster is completely initialized, the messages will disappear and you'll be ready to go.